accident was awful. I'm sorry, I had to work until 6.30.
today. I'm going to sell away.
sail away. It's by His grace, not by my works, I'm in this church. church of the Lord is being established, lifted high for all the world to see, and in that house that he's building on top of Mount Zion, Jesus included me. I believe the church of the Lord is being established, lifted high for all the world to see. 
Great swelling words. All I really was thinking about was how when, when I was a child, when we was young, my mom would bring us to church and there was a man there. And I, I venture to say he probably got on everybody's nerves in the church. But he found what he'd been looking for in his mind and God touched his life. And he was thrilled about it. So every church service, we'd show up there, and this dude would run the whole building nonstop. He was glad for what he had. And I was trying my best to hold back and behave tonight. But I'm telling you, I'm glad that I have. I appreciate that he's working in my clay. He's working in all of our clay, not just me, but all of us. And I'm appreciative for it. And I want to make sure and let him know. Let him know that he deals with me the way that he does. He deals with every one of us in different ways, different all this, blah, blah, blah. I'm not a genius, but he does. And thank God for it. <laughs> That's really all I had. <laughs> I'm just so thankful that he's working with me. And I don't want to fail him. I don't want to come up short, but I want to make it all the way, Brother Trent. We can make it all the way. If we'll be willing and obedient, we can go in and possess the land. I want to possess the land. And I'm working on it. He's working on me. And if I'd learn to just be the... Well, uh, Brother Chad Wright said Sunday morning, he talked about the, the clay and the potter. And we can't, we can't say, Lord, it's hot in here. I don't like it. I think I'm done. <laughs> Take me out. I can't say, take me out. Amen. There's plenty, not here, but all around me. And he put it there. Yeah. He's working. The problems that we have, yeah. he allowed them to be there. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. And on and on. There's several others right there in Psalms along that line. I'm just thankful. Yeah. I don't want to waste time. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. Yeah. Yeah. Just want to let him know and show you my exuberance. I hit it up here a while ago for, for lack of uh, whatever you want to call it. Everybody's looking at me. But I was feeling something, brother, and I'm appreciative for it. Now I'm done. Get that off of me. Oh, God. Amen.
Give him praise, give him glory, all ye people. God is great, and he's greatly to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm glad that I'm glad to be here. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. There's been times when you wasn't so glad to be here, hadn't there? But we're glad to be here tonight. Oh, God. So happy to have the De La Rosas with us and oh, yes. Brother Aka with us tonight and all you wonderful people. Amen. Amen. It's something. It'd be a sad thing if nobody cared enough to come and be together. I appreciate uh, y'all obeying the Spirit of God and not just the Spirit of God, but the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we can miss the Spirit of God, can't we? Sometimes we can think something's the Spirit of God and it might not be the Spirit of God. Thank God for the Word of God. Amen. That's right. It'll straighten us out, won't it? As a matter of fact, I was thinking about that Scripture that it says... Uh, all scripture is given by inspiration. It's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be thoroughly furnished unto all good works. The good works are the works that he'd have you to do. Those are the good works. The good works are the works that he's instructed us to do, such as give him the sacrifice of praise, which is the fruit of your lips, huh? Hallelujah. Lift him up and by night stand. Lift him up. As Brother, as brother Marino said, uh, uh, if you'll... If you'll Walk in obedience. You'll receive these promises. If you do these things, you'll never fail. You'll never fall. Hallelujah. Thank God for the scripture. Amen. And don't you love it? Don't you love it or appreciate it a little bit when somebody... Amen. We can rely on the word of God. The written word of God, we can rely on it. It can correct us and it can give us instruction. You can have confidence in that, can't you? Hallelujah. You might be lacking a little confidence in me, but I'll tell you what, we can stand on the Word of God. Amen. We can stand on the words of the Apostle to the Gentiles, can't we? Hallelujah. Thank God for this safe place. After all these years, I'm still so glad that He's brought me into this place. I'm still so glad that I'm a part after all these years, I'm still so glad, Brother Marino. I'm still so glad you're still here and willing to obey God. Hallelujah. Let me, let me go ahead and read you a scripture here. I won't be long, but uh, I want to I wanna give you something, and I don't want anybody to take it away from you. Right here in the Word of God, the foundation foundation of our walk with God, these things will help you to live the rest of your life for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And it came to pass, this is in Luke chapter 17, there's a couple of, couple of really uh, important things in Luke 17. This is one I want to bring out. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Luke 17 and 11. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. They wasn't feeling connected. They was feeling alone. They wasn't feeling saved. They wasn't feeling what they wanted to feel. They were, they were feeling... Uh, ostracized. They were feeling bad for the things that were going on in their life. They stood afar off. Now, I just added all that. You can think about it what you think. But they stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. 
Go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. As they went and did what Jesus said do, they were cleansed. That's, that's when. They were cleansed while they was doing what he said to do. Isn't that good? Can't you have some confidence in that? What am I going to go show myself to the priest for? Because he said, go show yourself. I don't have to have a type and shadow for that. I don't have to have anything but understanding that Jesus told them to go show yourselves to the priest. You know what he told me? He told me to forgive. He told me to forgive. And when I forgive, when I go and do what he told me to do, while I'm doing it, I'm cleansed of that, of that bitterness, of that disease, of selfishness and self-seeking. Hallelujah. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice, he glorified God fell down on his face at his feet and giving him thanks and he was a Samaritan. Now, I've heard people start talking about the ones that didn't thank him. I'm not going to focus on that. I'm focusing on the fact that they were healed, they were cleansed when they did what he said to do while they were doing that. Not just when they believed, but while they were doing something. And Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. Look at here. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. That faith will make you whole. Your faith is doing what Jesus says do. Your faith, ain't, your faith ain't squinting your eyes and believing and getting loud. Your faith is believing enough to go show yourself to the priest. Your faith is believing enough to everybody praise his name. Your faith is doing what he said to do and you will be healed, and you will be saved, and you will be cleansed by your faith. Amen. Amen. That's faith. That's faith that changes lives. That's faith that, that saves souls. That's faith that will take you on to eternal life. It's hearing the Word of God, not just some opinion, but hearing the Word of God and standing on that Word and letting your life do the Word of God. Letting your life be the Word of God. That will not only change your life, but it will change those that watch you go show yourself to the priest. We're to be a light, as, as the song says. We're to be a light that people can see His good works. The works that He's told you, that, that they can see that and that He'll be glorified and somebody will have an opportunity to go on and show themselves to the priest too. They'll have the opportunity to be saved by their faith. But how can they have, have faith in whom they've not heard? And how can they hear without a preacher? And how can he preach lest he be sent? I'm telling you, I think that Brother Marino was sent to us tonight. Huh? Was that the man of God speaking tonight? Was it the Word of God speaking through him tonight? Was he not instructing us to lift our hands? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. If we'll lift our hands, if we'll lift our voice, if we'll show up, if we'll do the things that we're called to do, right. Right. hallelujah, right. you'll go on to eternal life. And on the other hand, on the other hand, what can you expect if you don't? Praise the Lord. They could have come up with all kinds of, all kinds of excuses why they didn't need to go show themselves to the priest. But while they were going, they were cleansed. That's something you can stand on and put in your basket and take the rest of your life. 
That's something that no matter what people say, no matter what people are doing, how people are letting you down, how people are missing it, no matter what's happening, you can stand on the Word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's, it's a gift to be here. It's a gift to be a part of the body of Christ. It's a gift to, to have the knowledge of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It's a gift to be free of yourself. And I'm so thankful that the Lord included me. And he included each of us in this room. You know, we just have to keep, I keep thinking about, I need to keep doing my part. I'm going to speak about me because I'm me. <laughs> got to make your calling and election sure and uh, I'm just so blessed to be a part I can't I can't thank him enough I just can't praise him enough I just can't tell him how much he means to me he took my feet from the miry clay and he set my feet on a mighty rock to say I just can't thank him enough for what he's done for me I'm so it's just overwhelming. Words can't describe what God put, put, took me from and put me has put me in. And I don't even know but this much of it. And I'm just so thankful to, to just be here, to be, to be somewhere safe, to be with people who want to help you learn, help you grow. They want to help you uh, learn more. And... Uh, I just can't even speak right now. <laughs> I'm just so thankful. Praise the Lord. The world, and uh, I'm not a visitor. And I don't want to, you to feel pity for me, but uh, I'm part of the body of Christ. If we're going to go to heaven and we can't live down here, somebody is just scratching the surface. You ain't going nowhere. You're lying to yourself. Amen. You ought to be able to feel uh, the Spirit of God wherever you go in the body of Christ. I want to comment on that song. Uh, that we sang, uh, uh, the second song, what was it? Uh, uh, building uh, the church on Mount Zion. You think God builds the church anywhere else? Why Mount Zion? Huh? Jesus included me in, like Sister De Rosa said, you ought to be glad, brother, uh, brother, uh, uh, Brother Moreno almost made me turn a flip uh, tonight. And I know I'm, I'm old to turn a flip. If I do, you will have to call the ambulance. Uh, I'm 73 years old. <laughs> if I do, Sister Baker, you all might have to uh, call the ambulance. 
Maybe not. If the Holy Ghost wants you to do it. But uh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I got to the place where when I get up, I ache. The only place that I don't ache is church house. That's why I go to church a lot. Amen. I'm glad you all have a Tuesday night. Uh, I'm not going to wear my work on I'm going to come here some more. Because now the only Tuesday night we got is Porter and Jasper. Uh, uh, so I'll be, I'll be coming. I don't want to sit home because the only place that I don't feel pain is when I go to church. Amen. And then when, I, when we had the 18 wheeler, I used to be in pain. My wife used to be in pain. But uh, it releases me when I go to church. I feel so good. Then when I get in my car going home, I'm in pain. I said, oh, God. <laughs> but when I get to church, all my pain is gone. That's why I want to go to church Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night. <laughs> Amen. But uh, uh, Jesus included me in. Everybody lift your hand. Tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. you didn't include yourself in. I don't care what, uh, how knowledgeable you think you were. You wouldn't have included yourself in. You don't have the power to include yourself in. Right. And you don't even have the ability to include yourself in. But Jesus yes. included you in. Yes. And the church that he's building, he's building on Mount Zion. Yes. Jesus never came to build a church anywhere. Do you know this is Zion, right here in Jasper, Texas. It's not just the physical location. But the people is called Zion. That Zion, one of the, it's got seven translations. One of the most of it is where his name is written or where he has marked as his habitation, the meaning of Zion. And so God marks a place where he wants to dwell among his people. That's called Zion. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's one of the definitions of it, where he has marked his name. When you fly over Jerusalem, uh, 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 you will find out uh, when you are in an aeroplane and you know anything about Hebrew, you will find out that God's name is literally written in Jerusalem. It's a shin. Huh? And uh, it's the name of God. It's, <laughs> it's written on there. And that's the way God uh, built Zion. That's why he said that uh, God loveth uh, Zion uh, more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Right. Wherever Jacob went, wherever Abraham went, wherever Isaac went, God was with them. But when they leave the place, God lives with them. But Zion, hallelujah, God will never leave Zion. If you get to Zion and you leave, God ain't going to live with you. God stays in Zion. Hallelujah. That's why that song is, uh, it has a meaning to it. And I'm not going to talk hours, but I can on that song that uh, he included me in. Jesus came to build a church. Yes. Amen. That's why it was important when he told them, he said, who do you say that I am? At this time, they had followed him for a little while, but they have not got the revelation. They thought Jesus came to build a literal kingdom, that the Jews have been the, the, uh, the, the underdogs for many, many years. Everywhere they go, they dog them up. And so now we've got the Messiah, hallelujah, and uh, he's going to restore the kingdom. That's why before he went even to the graveyard, they said, when are you going to restore the kingdom? They thought they had, now we got, we got a, a man, a Messiah from heaven to restore the natural kingdom. No, he came to build a church at a place called Zion, where God the Father has his name written, hallelujah, and to include you in and include me in. It's a privilege. You ought to come here shouting. You ought to come here running. You ought to come here rolling on the floor. Get excited about where God has brought you from. Amen. This particular place in Jasper is where God's name is written. 
This is Zion, hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> there are a bunch of mountains in Jasper. I call them hills, though. Hills are just churches, a bunch of churches. But this is a mountain. This is the highest place. It's called Mount Zion. Oh, hallelujah. And God's name is written. And uh, it's written in the word of God. And to include me in, I passed a bunch of churches in town. And I got on this little corner because I was going where God has brought me to. Amen. Amen. Where he's building a church. Yes. Thank God. And he included you in. Ha! Lift your hand. Tell the Lord thank you. Huh? He included you in. If he didn't want you, he wouldn't have called you. If he didn't want you, he wouldn't have brought you in. So if God brought you in, stay put. There's a lot of things that you're going to go through. And he told them, he said, who do you say that I am? And Jesus had walked with them for a few, uh, about a year and a half. And he said, who do you think I am? And they said, my God, uh, some people are saying you are Elias. You are so, so, and so. You are one of the prophets. And uh, do you get the revelation? I've walked with you. I've fed you. I've given you meals to eat and all of that. So what, who do you think I am? Who do you say that I am? And they still gave him the same. Uh, 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 somebody say, you are somebody. You are Elijah. You are so, so, and so. And he said, no, it's not what somebody had told you. Who do you think I am? Hallelujah. Now you come to Zion, you ought to know that where you are is Zion. And you, you have to put your foot there because if you're not careful, when you descend from here, you're going downhill. That's why a lot of people come to the body of Christ and they leave and they think they got your own kingdom, but you're going downhill because you have left the place where God has written his name. He has marked it. Amen. And he includes you in. Uh, let me yes. even give you a little geographical distance. Uh, uh, thought on Jerusalem. Do you know Jerusalem is high up on the mountaintop. And every route that leads out of Jerusalem goes downhill. There was about eight de definite routes that goes out of Jerusalem. If you decide to go to Ankarim, that's the place of John the Baptist where he was born. That means it's a time. You're going to the prophets. No, brother, Jesus brought us higher than the prophet. If you're going to Zion, if you're going to Sinai, it's still the law. You're going back. No, you're going downhill. That's why this thing is higher than the law. This is higher than the prophet. Jesus came to build something higher than the law and the prophet. Why do you say that? Matthew 17, I said, I'm glad that he included me in and brought me to Zion. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Everybody say Zion. Amen. Say it again, Zion. Zion. Where his name is marked. Amen. Amen. He left the Sinai Peninsula. He, he left the prophet. Huh? Uh, even Matthew 17, uh, uh, 17, he said, after six days, that's a whole bunch of stuff. I'm not going to go through it. But he said that, uh, he said, uh, he took Peter, James, and John, what was the sense of it? Look, when you get in the church, huh, some people will be around the church for 50 years, right. but get in, be a part of it. Yeah. When God calls you in here, yeah. don't be around it. Stay right here. Right. Stay in it. Be a part of it. Amen. Tell yourself, I'm part of this. Yeah. Brother Baker, who can't run me off, and nobody can run me off. That's right. Amen? Amen? As a matter of fact, the person didn't call you. That's why some people, it amazes you that the preacher ran me off. The preacher ran you off? Do you know who called you? Yeah. Yeah. The preacher didn't call you. Amen. Get that revelation. Yes, this is Zion. Amen. Amen. Plant your foot deep in Zion yeah. because the preacher didn't call you. Yeah. If it's his power to call you, he can take you out. Nobody brought you to the body of Christ but God and his Amen. dear son. Amen. And they're the only one can take you out. And your attitude and your spirit can take you out. Right. But I'm not going to let my attitude take me out. God, I'm in your hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You brought me here for a reason. You're building a church huh, on Mount Zion. And you included me in, and I'm in. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Tell yourself, I'm in to stay. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise his wonderful name. Yeah. Amen. And so they went on the Mount of Transfiguration. 
And you know what happened? While they were there, huh? a spirit came in. Like it, it came here tonight. Do you know when the spirit come in, comes in there like that, it comes to give revelation. <laughs> Some people don't have a clue. When they come to church, they just sing and shout. and they, It comes to give revelation. Amen. Yeah. And if you're not careful, you won't see a thing. Amen. If you're not spiritual enough, you won't see a thing. You're just enjoying the shout. But thank God we're shouting because we know what we see. That's a revelation. And while they were on the mountaintop, the Bible said they were in a trance. Huh? And all of a sudden, Moses showed up. Oh, God. Huh? And, and uh, Elijah showed up. And while they were, Jesus was talking to them, uh, it said that uh, Jesus transfigured and became so white, brilliant. Moses didn't change. Elijah didn't change. Now, while they were elated, they were laid out in a trance, all of them. They were in a trance. The way Jesus, uh, according to what they, they say, the way he was so bright, human eye couldn't see it. It was blind. So they were in a trance. God put them in a trance. They were having a revelation. And out of that, Peter said, my God, is good to be here. Yeah. Lift your hands. Say, it's good to be here. Good to be here. That's it. Shut your mouth up. That's it. <laughs> it's good to be here. Yeah. But Peter goes back and wants to add some more. Say, my God, since it's good to be here, say, let us build three tabernacles. That was the most uneducated statement that a grown-up could make. One for Moses, one for Elijah, and one for Jesus. The Bible said, Matthew 17, Peter didn't even finish talking. And a voice from the glory well, God said, Peter, shut your mouth. You don't know what you're talking about. There was a voice from a glory well. It said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye him, not Moses, not Elijah. You know, you know what that revelation was? Huh? That what the law could not do. Elijah was a type of the law. It came to almost 2,500 years before Jesus showed up, and 1,500 years before Jesus showed up. The prophet started way back there, 25 plus 15, 2,500 plus 15, 4,000 years. The law couldn't do it. The prophets couldn't do it. So Peter shut your mouth. If the law could have done it, my son wouldn't be here. If the prophets could have done it, uh, uh, my son wouldn't be here. Moses was a type of the law. Uh, the law was actually to, to get humanity out of the graveyard. Uh, but the law kept mankind back in the grave for another 1,500 years. And here is the kinsman redeemer. Hallelujah. The man that could, going to change the of this world showed up. And you're going to compare him with Moses and Elijah. Jesus, God said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye him. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, God, not Moses, not Elijah, not the law, not the prophet. That's why when he brings you to Zion, he has brought you higher than where the law went. He had brought you higher than where the prophets went. If we don't go higher than the law and the prophets, we still be in the groove. Thank God. He's building a house on the Mount Zion. And he included me in. Oh God. Little all you. you, he included you. Little all you. Praise you. Ah. Hallelujah. 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 So Zion is high. And if you decide to live, to go to the prophets, you're going downhill. If you go to Ankarim, that's a picture of the law. If you decide to go to Asana Peninsula, you're going downhill. Huh? If you decide to go to Jericho, you are just in trouble. Jesus gave the parable. He said, a man living in Jerusalem decided to go to Jericho. Yeah, the reason he put Jericho in is human feeling will get you out of the church. Your feelings will, will deceive you. Right. It'll think, it'll tell you, Brother Baker, ain't good for you. Hey, 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 he's always stepping on your toes. But hey, you need it, and I need it too. Amen? Sometimes the preacher is working on your nerve until he can kill it. Yep. <laughs> 
If the preacher don't kill your nerve, you'll never be saved. <laughs> huh? Oh, he's getting on my nerve. I said, get on you some more, Brother Baker, because God wants to kill every nerve you got. Amen. <laughs> if he doesn't kill the nerve in you, you'll never be saved. Feelings is, is off the cuff. But thank God, amen, Jericho. And you know Jericho is the, is the most the lowest place on earth. Do you know that? <laughs> That's what Jesus gave that parable. That parable is another three, four hours seven. He said that a, a man left Jerusalem going to Jericho. You think Jesus just threw the parable out? No, there's more details to that. When you live a, a high mountain and going to the lowest point on earth, there must be something. Do you know between Jerusalem and Jericho, write it down. It's called the bloody way. <laughs> My God, the bloody way. That's why he, he, he fell among thieves and robbers. And they robbed him. They stripped him of everything he got in Zion and left him to die. My God, help us. But thank God, he said a man came by. Huh? Uh, the, the, the priest showed up. And he looked at him, said, uh -uh, I can't help you. Here comes the Levite. Uh, pass him, said, I can't help you. That's a picture of the law and the prophet. How about that? But the man on the Jericho road, yeah. that's that? my Jesus. Yeah. Oh, oh, the man on the Jericho road, that's my Jesus. That? Amen. Not only did he come to where we were, he had antidote for the plight that we were in. He said he poured in the oil and the wine. Oh, God. Hey, glory to God. <laughs> My God. You know, the wine is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That's it. The oil is the knowledge of the Word of God. That's why when preachers get in this pulpit, they take the scriptures and they squeeze it. This is olive. But if you don't squeeze it and you throw 200 scriptures, to the saints, you just uh, 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 olive chunker. A barbarian. Yeah, you just chunking olives. Some preachers, that's all they are. They, they chunk the olive. But some preachers, they will get the old and the new and squeeze it. Their life is in the oil. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's the understanding of the word of God. Mankind has lived 4,000 years without the understanding of the word of God. Amen. Thank God Jesus brought it. The man on the Jericho road. That's my Jesus. Come on, lift your hand and thank him. The man on the Jericho road. That's my Jesus. He came to build a church on the Mount Zion. And he included you in. Oh God, he did. Didn't he? Huh? He did. My God, he did. He included you in. And included me in. My God, stay on Mount Zion. How many want to stay on the Mount Zion? Because if you're not careful, every route will lead downhill. And uh, when you leave the body of Christ, you're going downhill. That's what was important for Jesus to show them that I just didn't come to raise a natural kingdom, but I came to raise a seed. Oh, God. Yeah. My God. And you included me in. Jesus, I thank you. I said, Jesus, I thank you. Jesus, I thank you. You ought to get excited about this. There's many people he could have called, but he called you, little you, little me. Do you know when David was in, in the cave of Adullam, huh? Yeah. Not the nobles came. You know who came to the David in the cave of Adullam? The misfits. The rejects, the poor, the maim and the blind, the ones the society don't think of, that's us. When God called you, you were blind, you were maimed, you couldn't help yourself, you were reject and a misfit. But they came to the cave of Adullam. That's our Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise his wonderful name. Yes. Now, you aren't going to stay in the cave of Adullam for long. When they came, the misfits, the rejects, and everybody. Jesus brought them out of, uh, uh, David brought them out of uh, the cave of Adam. You know where he took them to? Hebron. Everybody say Hebron. Hebron. 
You know what Hebron means? A fellowship. Oh, God. <laughs> it's higher than the cave of Adullam. Now we are here. We have come from the cave of Adullam. We are in Hebron. But brother, this is not the final stay. You know where he's going to take us to? Jerusalem. Manzion. Oh, God. Somebody sitting here will be among the 144,000 that lifts Hebron unto the Mount Zion. Hallelujah. Having the very nature of God. So it's a progressive. I'm glad he included me in. I said, I'm glad. I'm glad he included me in. That's why he's building the church on the Mount Zion. Oh, God. God help us. I said, God help us. But from the cave of Adullam to Hebron, that's a lot of trouble. <laughs> you think it's going to get easy? The road is so rough and bumpy. Trials. Huh? Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivered him out of all of it. The psalmist was prophesying about that, that, that scripture there. It wasn't about you or me. It was about Jesus. Amen. He had to come and fulfill that. <laughs> the righteous was Jesus. Now when he came to fulfill it, Sister Baker can fulfill that scripture. And you can fulfill that scripture. Because God had delivered him. Now he had called you on the same route. So you're going to go through a lot of trouble. That affliction is the word trouble. Huh? But the Lord delivered him out of some of it. Is that what he said? No. All of it. Everybody said all. all. So whatever trouble you're going through, trouble will come. But the Lord will deliver you out of all of it. Everybody say all. all. Oh, glory to God. Oh, I better quit. I'm getting excited about this. <laughs> so trouble is going to come. Huh? He said that uh, they that will live godly shall, everybody say shall, yeah. suffer persecution. Oh God. <laughs> if you live godly, you're going to suffer a lot of trouble. Don't go find trouble because trouble will find you. Yeah. When you go looking for trouble, you're a moron because as a believer, <laughs> trouble will find you. <laughs> you can't hide. Trouble is your stepping stone to a greater height in God. Yeah. Woo! Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise his wonderful name. By the, by the time the trouble comes, he had made a way of escape. So God would never let Brother Baker go through trouble without the way of escape. It comes hand in hand. Yes. Huh? If you're going to go through, Brother Kessel here is going to go through trial. God doesn't hit you with a trial before he makes a way of escape. He said, so with the trial or with the temptation, with, it comes like this. So by the time the trial, it came with a way of escape. Ha! Can you thank him? Can you thank him? My God. That's why he's not going to bring spoiled brats in heaven. You cannot be a spoiled brat and make the bride. It never work. You got to go through a lot of trouble. Amen. Brother, Brother Reda used to, in the 70s and the 80s, Brother Reda used to tell us, you can, you can judge a man by how many troubles he goes through. He can't, but you can judge him how he comes out of it. Yeah. Huh? Amen. Trouble after trouble. Yeah. Why is he going through? Keep your mouth shut. God is working something out of him. Amen. Woo! Yeah. Every trial has got the, uh, something God is working out of us. Yes. Woo! I'm glad. He built a church on deep Mount Zion, and he included me in. I better, oh, let, me, let me give you this before I sit down. Is it all right, Brother Baker? I'm going too long? Look. <laughs> in the Bible... Is that there's a, a silver smith that purifies silver. You know, when a silver smith comes in this country and find where silver is, 
Silver is dug in the earth. That's what Jesus came to. The silver smith in this book is Jesus. <laughs> he said he, he, he will purify the sons of Levi. <laughs> oh, God. That's the priest. Jesus is our high priest. He's the one going to purify us. The silver smiths go all over Jasper, Woodville, Cobbsnell, all over Livingston, buying all the silver he can buy. Whilst he's buying the silver, well, anybody can talk to him. You can get his attention. Sure. And he buys it, and buys it, and buys it. The Lord is calling all of us from all walks of life. You are silver sitting down there. Do you know what a silver means? Silver in the Bible is a redemptive metal. <laughs> it's a redemptive metal. That's why God told them, he said, don't count the number of the people of Israel. Never do that. But each time you count them, you better make sure everybody have a half a shekel <laughs> in their hand. Everybody. Because that shekel is silver. And it's a redemptive, redemptive metal. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he goes, it's a redemptive metal. It's a metal of redemption. Oh, God. All right. So he goes out there and buys all of it. Do you know Jesus bought you out of sin? You were in sin. I was in sin. Amen? He bought us. He purchased us. That's why the Bible says you are not on your own. You've been bought with a price by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. The silver smith was weak and dealing when he got you. Oh, God. <laughs> when he got you, he was wheeling and dealing and brought you to the body of Christ. Now, when, he, when he's buying, uh, anybody can get his attention. But brother, after he got the silver down there and he decided to refine the silver, he made sure if he needs to use the bathroom, whatever, whatever he does, all of that. And he, he makes the fire and take the silver. Huh? And put the silver whoo, in the middle of the fire. You think he's going to take his eyes off the silver? No, he doesn't do that. Because if he does that, the fire is going to blow the silver to pieces. So the silversmith puts the silver in the fire and sits there and watches it. Ah, what is he watching for? For the impurities. Then when the impurities come to the top, he scrapes it. And he takes the silver out. Do you know what? The cooling of Period. Oh, God. <laughs> While you go through trouble, God, I'm going to put you trouble, trouble, trouble. No, no, no. It will blow you up. That's right. He takes you out of one trouble and lets you cool down a little bit. Yeah. And Brother Shiloh goes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I'm out of it. <laughs> By the time you say, you finish, thank you, he had already made another fire. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> this time, that fire. It's a little bit about 10 degrees higher than the first one you went through. But don't you see the wisdom of God? He doesn't want to destroy you. He wants to get the impurities out. Huh? He puts you right in there. And he, now this is the comforting thought. Huh? That every time trouble hits, God is closer to you than he had ever been. Because he's watching you close. So when trouble hits, that's when God is closer to you. That's when you need to cry out and say, God, thank you. Because your eye is on the sparrow. You're watching me. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Oh, come on, somebody shout glory. <laughs> so when you go through trial, instead of murmuring, you ought to thank God because he's sitting there and watching you. Ha! What a wisdom. Now he watches it until there's impurities and he scrapes it off. 
And you come out and say, thank God, I'm through, I'm done. No, you're not. <laughs> you're not done yet. He does it several times. Until when he puts it in, there's no impurities. And you think you are done. No, you're not. <laughs> After he puts you in, and there's no bad margin, no gossip, no unforgiveness and everything, you are not done yet. All the heat has created some holes in the silver. And them holes have gotten oxygen in it. The silver will polish the silver. And the silver is as dull as it can be. Because there is still oxygen in the silver. So he comes back and goes, oh, 20 degrees higher. Oh, God. But this last fire is going to melt the silver and go to the cracks and the crevices and burn every oxygen out of it and put it back together. Come on, lift your hand. Tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. When God finishes with me, don't be nothing but me. My spirit huh, is completely wiped out. Amen. I'll put on the spirit of Christ. That's what religion thinks. When you get the Holy Ghost, you got the spirit of Christ. No, Jesus had the Holy Ghost. He was full of it, but he had his own spirit. <laughs> so the spirit of Christ is not the Holy Ghost. He got the Holy Ghost, but he had a, a disposition about him. He suffered, that's right. So he wants to eliminate my spirit. Woo! So after the final deal, he polishes the silver. And all what the silver smith is doing is, it's not about the silver, but it's about the silver smith. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Oh, somebody shout with me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's why in Matthew you told him, when people criticize you, they talk bad about you. He said, I got you. Choice. He said, jump for joy. That's what in the Greek. He said, jump for joy. Oh, they're talking about me, Sister Gravy. They're talking about me. They thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that they talk about me. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because it's going to work. A work in you that nothing could have done. Yeah. Finally, the oxygen, everything is gone. And the silver smith polishes the silver last time. And the silver polishes nice. You know what he does? He looked at him silver. And he can see his image <laughs> in the silver. That's why nobody is going to make it on Mount Zion <laughs> without the very image of Jesus Christ. When we are done, we yep. just like him. Amen. How many want to look like him? Yes, sir. We're we are working on it, aren't we? Yes. Turn yourself over to him yes, and let him work on you. Oh, yeah. The silver speed knows when you are done. My God, somebody is going to make it to heaven. There's somebody sitting here tonight can make it to heaven, can make the bride. Why not you? Why not me? Amen? If God didn't want you, he wouldn't have brought you here. If he brought you here, he brought you for you to make the bride. Lift your hand. Tell the Lord, thank you. Come on, let's thank him. Praise his wonderful name. Jesus is building a church on the Mount Zion. Glad he included me in. We love you. Man, God, we better love one another. Amen. If you're going to go to heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah.
out of it. So there was a, there was plenty for for everyone. That's a. Well, our elders taught us that our services and meetings should be like a buffet. Every, okay. Oh God. I want to say how much I appreciate these uh, our elders coming by and being with us uh, and I appreciate what he said uh, that he's not a not a visitor this is a the church we uh, that's something and I hope he says that everywhere he goes uh, we, we're not to walk in an assembly and try to find our place we are to walk in and be the body and act like the body. Yeah. Live the body. I, I think that's right, don't y'all? Yes, sir. All right, y'all remember uh, the meeting in Nacogdoches starts 7 o'clock Thursday night and, um, and Friday and Saturday. Then we're going to try to get some folks to hurry up and get back for Owen's birthday. Uh, I think, Brother Bob, y'all want to come. I think you're serving... Uh, T-bones, baked potatoes, and stuff like that, yeah. and so uh, crawfish. Crawfish, crawfish, crawfish stuff. Crawfish. We'll put it in the paper. Maybe we can get the city to come out, <laughs> be free of charge. So I would like to uh, encourage y'all to try to get your youngins over there and uh, be a part of Baby O's birthday, and maybe uh, somebody can help corral old Jude. That'd be something, wouldn't it? Yeah. All right. So, uh, and then remember, we're not going to have service here Sunday. We're going to go to Humble. It uh, starts at 11 o'clock. I think it goes to 3, I think. Uh, 2? 3. Okay. So, uh, Brother Brown's 90th birthday, and we're hope, sure praying the Lord to give him another 90. It, I'm. Uh, I always say uh, we can't we can't replace the elders uh, as fast as some would like to take their place. Uh, but elders are ordained of God, and God equips them to to help take care of us. And so I like to pray the Lord would give him a, a long. Long, long time. Him and his and his wife. We we love them, appreciate them. This church is in existence because of him. Amen. And I don't want to ever take that away from him. I still hold the words he gave me on two or three things. The first day, one is when I uh, I'll tell you this. He told me he said, uh, "Have you talked to your wife?" I said, "How can I talk to my wife? I've been with y'all." Uh, I don't have a, I didn't have a way of calling her. Uh, do you have any suggestions of what, how I should approach it? He said, well, tell her to start packing. <laughs> she, packing uh, she ain't stopped packing. She, 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 she just packed us up again the other day. And so she's a good packer. If y'all ever want to move, she can sure show you how to pack. So anyway, I want to. I want to encourage everybody to come to Humble. Now, do we have any other announcement we need to mention? Remember that Saturday service in Nacogdoches starts at 10, not 11. It starts at 10. All right. 10 to 1. 10 to 1, Saturday. So I know that I know that this church believes in fellowship meetings. We have one once a month, and it's doing such a wonderful job. And I'm hoping that it's get more spread around to other brethren will start having these fellowship meetings for the local assemblies. So I'm, I'm excited about that. So everybody come with your, with your praise on and your strength to worship and help God's people. Sister Susie. Nathan's 18th birthday party, the 27th. And I think if I could say this, that we're, they're going to have it at their new establishment, Lord willing. And y'all going to get to see where their 
where they've been working so hard and a lot of y'all have been over helping them and their house got moved and they we're trying to get their lights on and their water's already on. There's a lot of excitement going on on Mitchum Hill. And uh, that's not the old Mitchum Hill off of 2100, the new Mitchum Hill at Coleman Hill. So we appreciate the Mitchums and all of their... I want all you mothers to know this. Sister Susie, is, she won't tell y'all, but she's laughing at y'all. She is so laughing at all y'all, the parents. They raised, I don't know, 22 kids. And uh, everybody looked at them, cross-eyed, grunted, threatened to quit coming to church, want to know why they couldn't keep their kids under control, why they couldn't do this, why they let them do that. Poor Sister Susie, she's one of them that Brother Ico was preaching about. She, uh, she, she'd been put back in 10 degrees four or five times, hotter. But she's made it through it. And now she's watching y'all chase your kids, don't know what to do with them, roll their eyes, tell their grandma and grandpa to do something, please do something with them. And she's just smiling. She's been here that long. Isn't that something? And all you younger mothers, if y'all will stay in the fire, Y'all get to smile at the other ones coming up. I love it. I, I know that we had a bunch of old men here not long ago before we buried them all. They, they had a fit with all the kids making noise. My wife says the reason it don't affect me as bad is because I can't hear. But I, I don't know if Brother Danar is turning his hearing aid down sometime or what, but it don't seem to bother him. I thank God for... <laughs> I thank God for the life. I thank God for the life. And so there's a lot more we could say, but I appreciate, I appreciate Brother Ica coming and uh, making, a, making a deposit here for us. And uh, let's pray we take this good spirit into the fellowship meeting. Brother Baker, um, I'd like to add, because we oh. remember Brother Robinson, he's going to be traveling to India yeah. this weekend. Oh, really? I hope they can, I hope they can find Brother, uh, Brother uh, Sakomini. Wouldn't that be good? Y'all remember Brother Sakomini, Brother Mike? I wish somebody could find him somehow, somewhere. All right. Well, let's thank God for this good night. Everybody.